Today we're gonna to do a favorites video. I have in front of me a bunch of skincare that I have been loving for the last couple of months. It's been a couple months since I've done a favorites video. And this is actually gonna be my last favorites video before I do my best of 2021. So I'm gonna get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that you'll subscribe before you go. I also hope you will follow me over on Instagram. I am gonna be sharing all kinds of skincare content over there this entire fall season, which I am so excited for this fall season. It just feels like it's a little bit more magical this year and I'm here for it. So anyway, I will put the links to my Instagram, my private Facebook group, all of the stuff in the description box. I hope you'll check it out. Okay, I wanna start with cleansers. I actually have three, two are hits, one is a miss. And the first one I'm not gonna get way into because it is my Honest Beauty. This is the Gel to Milk. You guys have heard me talk about this a bunch. I talked about this in my PM routine. I also talked about this in my Affordable Alternatives. So I'm not gonna go on and on. Essentially though, this is definitely a go-to cleanser for me. It is a gel that I put on dry skin and I use it to kind of break up the makeup. And then when you add water to it, it actually turns right into a milk right in front of your eyes. It's kind of satisfying like that, honestly. I think that might be some of the allure of it that it's just kind of a neat little skin magic trick. But beyond that, it leaves my skin really soft and supple and not stripped and just kind of prepared as a dry dehydrated skin person. It leaves my skin prepared for the rest of my skincare or makeup or anything like that without feeling dry and dehydrated more. And I love that in a cleanser. Now, if you are oily or even if you're combo, you may not like this. This might not you know, do it for you because it might feel like it leaves a film or something like that. But as a dehydrated dry person, that's actually a nice thing. I mean, it's not a film in the normal sense. It's just that it leaves behind moisture. I love it. Okay, the next one that is a hit is by Naturium. Now, in my Naturium video, I actually shared that their mixed greens cleanser was a good cleanser, but I could not stand the smell. This one is their niacinamide cleanser. It's their niacinamide 3% cleanser. I picked this up just a couple of weeks ago, and honestly, the very, very first time that I used it, I already knew that it was gonna be a favorite because it did not leave my skin dry or tight. It felt perfectly clean. There is no scent. It has this perfect texture. It just gets your skin just clean enough, and then the bonus is that it has that 3% niacinamide. Now, niacinamide is vitamin B3. I know I've talked about it forever here. I made an entire dedicated video to niacinamide several years ago because I have loved that ingredient for so long. It's a pigment inhibitor, it helps with your pores, it helps your barrier function, it helps regulate oil production. It's just a superstar ingredient, and niacinamide is best in two to five percent. So this hits that sweet spot. I realize it's in a rinse off, but I still think that it is valuable in a cleanser. I love that this is a pump. It's just a great cleanser all the way around. They knocked it out of the park with this one. The one that's actually a fail is by Hero. I picked this one up at the same time that I picked up the Naturium. And this is their Clear Collective. The ingredient deck in here is amazing. It's got uh, mandelic acid, it has glycolic acid, it has a, just a ton of things in here that look like things that I might like. It has pineapple in there for enzymes to help to gently exfoliate your skin. I just thought, hmm, maybe that'll be a really nice gentle exfoliating, you know, kind of gelée is what I was hoping for. Well, unfortunately, I've used it a few times and honestly, I can't even believe I used it past the very first time I used it because it literally sucked the life out of my skin. It dried my skin so badly that if I didn't put like an essence or something on right after, you know, within a minute, boy, my skin looked almost like just shriveled a little bit. Now, to I, I wanna say that the ingredient deck in here is absolutely amazing. This is one of those cases where it really just wasn't appropriate for my particular skin type. So if you are combo or if you lean oily or if you're really oily, you might actually really like this because a lot of those alpha hydroxy acids and those ingredients in there are really great ingredients. It just doesn't agree with dry skin. So that is the Hero Clear Collective Exfoliating Jelly Cleanser. Okay, next I wanna talk about something else I picked up at the drugstore that surprised me, and that is the number seven. This is the Dark Circle Corrector. Okay, listen, I don't really buy into these kind of products typically. This is one of those products that has the little roller balls on it, 
and it actually is pigmented. I will show you that in just a second. I keep this in the fridge. What I like about the design of the packaging is you actually twist it in order to get product out. And when you twist it and lock it, the product won't come out, which is really great if you travel with your products or, or if you just toss them into a bag or something, it won't get super messy because it's locked and it can't squeeze out. The color of this is very sheer, but it is kind of a peachy beige. So it definitely does give you in a skincare fashion, not in a makeup fashion, a little bit of color correction. So if you have the subtlest of dark circles due to uh, vascularity, greens or blues, this might really help to just barely give you a veil of color correction. What I like about it skincare wise is that it has caffeine in there. I find that in the moment that I'm using it, it definitely makes my under eyes look better. Between the color correction and the caffeine, I feel like it definitely gives them a boost. Do I think it's doing anything long-term? Probably not. I think that this is almost like that bridge between skincare and makeup. It's not quite fully skincare that's going to have long-term benefits and it's not fully makeup because it doesn't have, you know, a lot of opacity, but I really like this. I'm actually reaching for it all the time in my skincare slash makeup routine. I don't use it at night. I just use it during the day. I obviously have it on today along with my skincare and my makeup. So I was really pleasantly surprised about this. I had really low hopes when I picked it up and I'm super happy that I got it. Okay, an oldie but a goodie that I've been reaching for a bunch also is the Sun Project Shimmer Sun Essence. This is by Thank You Farmer. I've been talking about this for a couple years. It's an SPF of 30, but I use it almost like a primer under my makeup. And I find that this is one of those products that I like to pull out in the fall slash winter because it has a little bit of an iridescence. And for a normal to dry or dry skinned person, you will know that a little bit of iridescence almost gives this lit from within, fakes you out on hydrated skin. And I do notice that my skin has definitely taken a little bit of a turn going into the fall. Like it feels a little bit less, you know, lustrous. It's got a little like, you know, dullness to it. And I think a lot of that is we've got the heat on and we're inside a lot. The weather is changing. And so I'm kind of relying on some things to help with hydration and help to kind of boost the luminosity kind of thing. And this is one of those things. I just think it leaves the skin so pretty. And then of course I go on with my makeup over this and it just kind of gives that radiant from within without being a disco ball or being greasy. And then I can appreciate having an extra layer of SPF of 30. I don't rely on this to be my sunscreen, but I like it as a primer and the SPF 30 for me is just kind of an added bonus. Now something that's important to know is that it has the slightest fragrance. And I can't put my finger on it, but I recognize the fragrance. It's incredibly pleasant. It's not a bad fragrance in any way, but there is a fragrance. So if that's something that is, you know, a deal breaker for you, it's in here. I actually like it. I associate the fragrance with this luminosity and I, I like it. It's, it's, I know I'm not supposed to like it, but I do. What I like the most is what it does for the skin. If you can see that kind of just, I mean, this hand looks awful and this hand it's like, okay, you can't tell that it's totally parched, right? So I have been pulling for this one a lot again, and I'm so glad that I have it. I love this one. Okay, next let's talk about two big favorites. My number one favorite of the entire month is going to be this vegan kombucha tea essence. This was a recommendation by somebody in my Facebook group. And unfortunately I shook it, you guys. If by the end of the video it goes back, it's actually by phase. So like in the morning when I go to use it, it usually is white up here and then kind of a like tan brown color down here. And then you mix it together. Now the ingredient deck in here is beautiful. It's got green tea. It has sunflower seed oil. It has, which is down the list just a little bit, but it leaves your skin so nourished, so hydrated, so moisturized. It is absolutely glorious. I am so glad it was recommended to me. 
I have used this a couple different ways. I've used it with just a little bit in the palm of my hand pressed into my skin and then I go on with my skincare routine in the morning and it just adds that kick of moisture to my routine, which like I said, right now, I feel like I just need a little extra given the season and the kind of you know environment that we are in inside. But then something else that I have tried is I have layered it up like three layers of it. I'll put a layer on and then I will wait a minute and then I'll put another layer and I've done up to three layers and then followed with just sunscreen and then my makeup. I feel like you can get a big reset by just layering a bunch of it on and letting it just soak in your skin. I don't know. It's absolutely beautiful. It reminds me a lot of the Laneige cream skin. I have run around with it a bunch. So mine has gotten the label kind of it's leaked. I haven't been as careful as I should be with it. Like probably didn't close the cap enough. But this reminds me a lot of the Laneige Cream Skin, and I loved that product too, but that product sometimes was just a little bit too heavy, and it would almost leave me looking greasy. Like it would take me from being dry to all the way to being greasy really, really easily without using a bunch of it. And the funny thing is, is I always actually liked the look. I thought, oh my gosh, but in reality, it didn't look that great. You just wanna look hydrated and moisturized. You don't actually wanna look all the way to greasy, right? Okay, so this is a huge favorite and I'm so thankful to my Facebook group for recommendations like this. Okay, the next favorite is gonna be DNA Repair Enzymes. This has been a favorite for a really long time, and the reason why this is in this video is because just a couple videos back, I did an interview with Dr. Dan Yarosh. If you missed that video, I do hope you'll check it out. It is probably the favorite, my favorite video I have done on this channel because he is just sparkling star. I tell you, he is a man who's dedicated his life to studying DNA Repair Enzymes, and he is able to articulate the science behind it so well and educate so well that it was a joy to talk to him the times that I've talked to him and then the time that we recorded it I just feel like he really was able to get that information out in a way that was understandable to everyone and it's really really important information so after prepping for that video and talking to him and studying it even more I realized even more how important DNA repair enzymes are to our skin health not just the aesthetic not just just for the collagen and the elastin and the hyperpigmentation aspect, but more for the skin cancer prevention and that sort of thing. So DNA repair enzymes are another big, big, big favorite. My favorite of the DNA repair enzymes is Photozyme and it is their DNA Youth Recovery Serum. This is my number one favorite DNA repair enzyme product that I have tried. Now I also like their cream that comes in a pot. I have it right here. I like this a lot, but if I had to choose, I'd still choose the serum. I love the body lotion, but to be fair, I don't use the body lotion as much right now in the winter with myself all covered up as I do in the summer, like when we've been boating or something like that and I've had my arms and my legs out in the sun. I think that that is when that body lotion really comes in handy. Now, if you are somebody who has any, had any kind of skin cancers removed from your arms or your legs, or if you have any kind of actinic keratosis, anything like that, then you might like to look into the body lotion as well all year long. So that is a huge, huge favorite. I really do hope you guys will check out that video because I feel like the information in that video that Dr. Yarosh shares is invaluable. And I feel like you should share it with somebody that you love also, who, uh, you know, especially anybody who might have, you know, the predisposition to skin cancer. I just think it's really valuable information. Okay, we just have a couple more things and then I do have a couple fails. Uh, Revitalash Foam. This is a huge favorite also. Uh, you pr can probably see how much grow out I have. I have definitely started to notice not only the growth of my eyelashes big time, but the growth of my hair from using this. Now, I made that hair video a little while back, you guys, and it has taken months for me to start to go, oh, it's really starting to happen. So I have to say that this is expensive and it is not a one bottle and you're gonna see results thing. That is what I have figured out. I went through this whole bottle. I am. I went through a whole nother bottle that I threw away before I realized I wanted to show this. Then I am almost to the bottom of that bottle 
and I have another bottle just ready to go. So I am essentially on to my fourth bottle and I'm really starting to be like, wow, my hair is growing fast. Now people have asked, does it look thicker? I would say it's slightly thicker. It's not a lot thicker. It's just growing faster. So if thickness is your deal, then I don't know if this is worth the money for that. But if you are looking to try, like for me, I've been trying to grow my bangs out for a really, really long time. And they, of course they grow, but they grow so slow that it's almost like the breakage happens faster than the growth. Well, I'm finally where my growth is happening fast enough that I'm able to trim up and I'm starting to see the fruition of the growth. So for me, this was a big hit and I'm gonna keep using it. I've been using it long enough now that I can back off to like, I don't know, every other day. Hopefully pretty soon I'll be able to do every third day and then I can, you know, really, it'll last me a lot longer. But it is a big, big hit for length, for sure. But again, I wanna reiterate, it is something that you gotta go through a couple bottles and it takes a few months before you start to notice and you have to get it in every day in the beginning or else you won't see results and you'll just think you wasted your money. But that is a hit. And also the Revita Lash Serum is a great big hit for me. I don't have it here right now, but along those same lines, my eyelashes are finally back. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but you know, I got my eyelash extensions removed and my eyelashes were not bald because I'd already started using lash serums for several months prior to that, but I was using some other lash serums. And when I started using the Revita Lash, that's when I think things kicked into high gear. And just in the last, I don't know, maybe three weeks, I'm like, okay, my lashes are actually long now. So along those lines, another favorite is a mascara and that is the Hourglass Caution mascara. I've gotten so many questions recently about what mascara I'm wearing. And I have to tell you, I actually think the reason why I'm getting those questions is really the eyelash serum, that my lashes are long, and then this mascara just amplifies that. My very, very favorite mascara is by Thrive. And it just got old and I didn't, I didn't go online and order more. I don't know what happened. And I finally got to the point where I'm like, you can't use that mascara anymore. It's, it's old, it's too old to keep using. So I ran out to Sephora and I picked this one up. This is an oldie bit of goodie that I love. And I was reminded how much it just, it really, really gives dramatically big long lashes and volume and all of the things. The only downside to this one is that it's very hard to get off. I mean, it is very hard to get off. I have to use a waterproof eyelash or eye makeup remover and I have to really set it on my eyes for a little while and then I have to work it around. It probably takes me like three minutes, which is a long time in a routine to sit and work through your mascara because I don't wear a ton of other eye makeup, but man, this mascara takes a long time to get off. I feel like it's worth it because it really does have this beautiful look that doesn't flake or smudge or budge or do anything like that. You just have to, you know, spend a little bit of extra time taking it off. So that is a favorite. A fail along those lines is by Velour. So I went into Sephora when I bought that hourglass and I actually asked them if they had any tubing mascara. Thrive is a tubing mascara. And if you're not familiar, it does exactly what it says and it tubes your lashes. And so the way that you remove it is you splash with a bunch of water and then they just all come off. And it literally looks like spiders or something. I find tubing mascara to be really, really good for your lashes. I feel like it leaves them really healthy. You're not tugging and, and all of this stuff on your lashes. You're not using eye makeup remover. It's just really easy. Once you, once you know how to remove tubing the mascara, it's really, really easy to do. And it does not, smudge flake budge nothing you can go to a wedding with it and it's as good in my opinion as a like um, waterproof mascara well almost if you cry too much it'll start to loosen up and you might it might come off but but for a decent amount of time to be mascara is also like water resistant you know to tears and stuff like that this one is not that. So I put it on and I noticed all day long it was starting to flake, some of it got in my eyes, like the tips of my lashes no longer looked like they had mascara on them by the end of the day. Then when I went to take it off, it was tubing, but the tubes just didn't do a good enough job. They didn't stay on because the rest that was left on my lashes came off like tubing mascara, but a good tubing mascara shouldn't flake and crack and land on your face. It shouldn't do any of that stuff. So this is Velour Mascara and it is unfortunately a fail. Another fail for me, and this is kind of embarrassing, but it's the Augustinus Butter Oil. 
I don't exactly know how I even picked this up, to be honest. I was at Nordstrom and I kind of got googly eyes for it. It was new when I saw it. I think somebody even texted me and said, did you see that there's a new oil by Augustinus Botter? And um, I do not believe you need to spend this kind of money on a facial oil. And so I don't, I don't really have an excuse. I don't know why I bought it, but I did. And it's literally just meh. And I should have known that. And so really the fail is my judgment on that. I should have known better than to pick up a super expensive oil. And um, obviously I'm gonna use it up. I'm gonna use it up doing gua sha and you know, I might mix it with a foundation, but it is no better than, you know, my good molecules or some of those other oils. It just isn't. So for that, it's a fail. It's not a bad product. I just don't think that it is worth the amount of money that uh, they're charging for this little oil. My last fail, you guys, is the Dyson Airwrap. And this is another one that I finally caved and I bought. And I just, just a little bit about my hair. First of all, I'm a hairstylist, so I'm pretty adept with tools. Like I feel like I'm pretty good with um, styling tools and I just know how to do hair, right? I mean, I, I started hair school in 2003, so I've been doing hair for a long time, right? And this, I started out with this attachment because you can change the attachments and I just really bought into the hype. I saw some of my friends using this and then I saw other influencers using it and the, the wand and I just was like, oh man, they look beautiful. Well, this left me with a frizzy, crazy mess. I mean, I like to do curtain bangs and so I do a big roll right in the front towards the back. And usually with my bed head, my $40 dryer, I get these beautiful curtain bangs. I can really get that with that dryer. This seriously left my hair kind of this frizzy, not smoothed, not, it wasn't good. So I took this off and I'm like, okay, that's fine. There's these other attachments that I'm super excited about, right? And I even ordered additional longer attachments because I have hair extensions. And here's the deal, you have to have your hair, it has to be a little bit damp in order to use this, right? And I have naturally curly hair that is sort of frizzy and it's not all the way to curly and it's definitely not straight. It's somewhere in between and it has some frizz and it has a funky kink and then no, you know, and then it's a little bit straighter and then a little bit more curl. And so it's just not, it's not uniform in any way. When I went to use this, it doesn't address any of that. It just gives you a curl. So like a regular curling iron or wand or something like that can smooth out those irregularities and give you a new curl. This just adds a curl to the irregularities. I mean, I looked ridiculous. The first time that I curled my hair with this, I seriously looked in the mirror and started laughing because it was, it, it looked so bad. Okay, I am going to, of course, continue to test this out and see if I can reverse my opinion on it because it was very expensive. And of course I bought it myself but I am not anticipating uh, a good outcome because for me to curl my hair and have it look really good, I actually have to blow it out first so that I smooth out all those irregularities and then I usually go in and curl my hair. Like it's a huge process to curl my hair to make it look decent. This needs hair that is sort of wet or damp so you can't blow your hair out first and then go back and curl it. So I don't know how I can possibly alleviate the irregularities with this, but I am gonna keep trying. But I would say if you have curly hair, if you have unruly hair, if you have frizzy hair, I would really caution you against splurging on this because it doesn't do any of the correction. It just adds curl. I do hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I hope you'll follow me over on Instagram and also consider joining my private Facebook group where we have a lot of fun. It's a wonderful community. And I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.